United States Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said that her talks with top Chinese officials in recent days were direct and productive. She said that it helped put the Chinese and US relationship on surer footing. Yellen said that the US and China remained at odds on a number of issues, but expressed confidence that her bilateral meetings had advanced Washington's effort to stabilize fraught relations between the world's two biggest economies. Yellen's four-day visit is Washington's latest attempt to repair US-China ties, which have been battered over issues from Taiwan to technology and that have drawn allies into their rivalry, affecting companies and trade ties. Protests in Israel have reignited. Tens of thousands of Israeli protesters have demonstrated in Tel Aviv and other cities. The protests were held against proposed changes to the judicial system. The judicial reforms have sparked fear of a more authoritarian government. Demonstrators have kept up the pressure with weekly rallies against the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Israeli media estimated the turnout at Saturday's protest in Tel Aviv at 150,000. This is the 27th such demonstration since the proposed changes were unveiled in January. The latest spell of protests took place ahead of a vote on Monday in Parliament on a key provision of the proposed overhaul. Five Ukrainian military commanders returned from Turkey to Ukraine on Saturday. The army personnel had been held in Turkey since Russia released them in a prisoner exchange last year. President Volodymyr Zelensky brought them home from Turkey. This move has enraged Kremlin. Moscow said that it violated a prisoner exchange deal engineered last year. Russia immediately denounced the release. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that Ankara had promised under the exchange agreement to keep the men in Turkey and complained Moscow had not been informed. The five commanders have been lionized in Ukraine after leading a fierce three-month defense of Mariupol from the Azovstal steel plant last year. Hundreds of protesters defied a ban to march in central Paris against police violence. It took place a week after riots were sparked by the killing of a teenager in a Parisian suburb. Police dispersed the crowd from Paris's huge Place de la République. The authorities sent several hundred people towards the white boulevard Magenta where they were seen marching peacefully. After the demonstration, Paris police said the two people were arrested. The Paris Police Department cited the context of tensions while explaining why it had banned the planned demonstration. Saturday's demonstration was called by the family of Adama Traore. He was a black Frenchman whose death in police custody in 2016 has been marked by annual protests since. A couple of weeks after comparing Xi Jinping to dictators, US President Joe Biden has revealed that he warned the Chinese president of getting too close with Russia after his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin because Beijing relies on Western investment. When asked what Xi Jinping said in response, Biden said that the Chinese president listened to him and did not argue. This comes at a time when the relationship between China and the US has grown tense over a range of issues including Taiwan. In March, Putin and Jinping had two days of conversation with warm words of friendship between China and Russia and joint criticism of the West, but no sign of diplomatic breakthrough over war hit Ukraine. The White House and the Pentagon on Friday defended the Biden administration's decision to provide Ukraine with controversial cluster munitions as part of a newly announced $800 million military aid package that will help it fight Russia's invading forces. The decision to send the munitions encased in 155mm artillery shells was made by President Joe Biden and is being criticized by human rights groups who believe unexploded munitions will increase the risk of death and injury to civilians. Senior White House and Pentagon officials acknowledged concerns about their use but emphasized that they are needed in Ukraine's fight against Russia and that weapons being sent to Ukraine are more effective than cluster munitions being used by Russia inside Ukraine. After a period of prolonged drought, Spain is now reeling under an intense spate of flash floods. Zaragoza in Spain has experienced flash flooding as torrential rain and hailstorms have battered the province. The heavy downpour resulted in several streets being inundated, causing some drivers to become trapped in their cars. Floods resulted in the inundation of roads, including one of the ring roads. Numerous motorists found themselves trapped in their vehicles, prompting the intervention of firefighters and diving team to rescue them from the floodwaters. Firefighters had to carry out multiple high-water rescues after raging flash floods swept through the city. At least 50 people, including 8 children, have been killed by floods in Pakistan. The floods and landslides were triggered by monsoon rains that have flashed Pakistan since last month. The summer monsoon brings South Asia 70-80% to of its annual rainfall between June and September every year. It is vital for the livelihoods of millions of farmers and food security in a region of around 2 billion people. But it also brings landslides and floods. 
A national disaster management official said that 50 deaths have been reported in different rain-related incidents all over Pakistan since the start of the monsoon on June 15. They added that 87 people were injured during this period. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has revealed that Yevgeny Prigozhin, the chief of the Russian mercenary group known as Wagner, is currently in St. Petersburg. Lukashenko, who had helped Russia broker a deal with Prigozhin following an abortive mutiny, has also stated that the Wagner troops still remain stationed at their previous camps. The rebellion orchestrated by Prigozhin's troops had posed a significant threat to Russian President Vladimir Putin as they were able to swiftly capture military headquarters in Rostov-on-Don and had aimed to march on Moscow with the intention of ousting the defense minister and the general staff chief. However, Prigozhin had halted the advance of its troops under the agreement facilitated by Belarusian president. He was then sent to Belarus under the terms of a deal and mutiny charges against him were dropped. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been named in six cases. The cases include three under the Tough Anti-Terrorism Act or ATA for the unprecedented attack on the General Headquarters or GHQ of the Army in Rawalpindi on May 9. Supporters of the PTI chief breached the gates of the Pakistan Army's GHQ in Rawalpindi. The day was dubbed as a Black Day by the military. Reports said that the joint investigation teams are investigating all the cases including the attacks on military installations and the incident of arson at a metro station. Sources said that three of these cases were registered against Khan on May 9th, while the other three on May 10th under the Anti-Terrorism Act.